two persons are clipped into the bow during a sail change in the Indian Ocean. And after a negligent jibe, both are overboard. One self recovers, the other one is killed. Stick with me with episode 111 of the Sailor's Debrief. We're going to find out if your tether has a safety bulletin anchored to it. And then later on, we're going to discuss the comment of the month. Stand by. This is Schaefer from the Ministry of Sailing, and today we're going to talk about how this flat plate snap hook has a marine advisory attached to it. You're going to understand what caused the failure of this snap hook, you're going to understand the hazards that are associated with it, and you're going to learn about one country that banned the flat plate snap hook from offshore use altogether. I don't care if you've raced as many miles as I have across the ocean or if you've just sailing across the lake. If you own a flat plate snap hook, go get it. And let's see the risks that are associated with it. And then also, join our community and comment below. Here's the background. In November 2017, the Clipper Around the World race in the Indian Ocean. CV30 was the vessel, and it was about 1,500 miles from Fremantle. The seas were rough, the wind was 20 knots, gusting to 40. A sail change, plus a negligent jibe, meant two sailors splashed off the forepeak of the vessel. Both were wearing personal protective equipment, and they were clipped in just as trained. Sailor A self-recovered. He had both the shorty and the long tethers attached. Sailor B only had one tether attached. Dragged starboard off the forepeak, the snap hook failed, and Sailor B floated away. Sailor B was recovered 36 minutes after being detached from the boat. It's most unfortunate they were unable to revive him. He was buried at sea. Remember, the sailor did everything he was trained to do. Despite that, the snap hook failed, thus the reason he lost his life. The Marine Accident Investigation Branch discovered that the snap hook became entangled by the cleat. The loads were not able to be aligned properly. As a result of the loads not being aligned properly to the flat plate snap hook, the snap hook distorted and then released. The investigation led to an immediate release of a safety warning on the use of safety harness tethers on sailing yachts. This happened in 2018, but yet today I see on boats all over the world people still using this and when I ask them they are unaware of the proper use and they're unaware of the safety advisory. Does yours have one attached to it? The photo shown is recreated on the exact vessel that caused the fatality. You can see how the snap hook became entangled and then jammed underneath the cleat. And this photo is the actual snap hook that was recovered from the victim after it had failed. Now look at the similarities of the snap hook that failed and the one that was tested. As you can see, the points of failure are identical. On the left, you can see the tested snap hook, and on the right, is the one that failed. It's important to note here, I'm not singling out any manufacturer who still uses the flat plate snap hook. My intent is to raise awareness of the safety bulletin and the proper use of your safety tethers. You don't want them to become death traps. Awareness is just another tool of risk control. The side load testing on the flat plate snap hook showed failures and distortion at about 275 pounds as opposed to the side molded snap hooks, which gave way at about 2,700 pounds. That's 10 times the amount of loads on a sideway load. And the difference, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason that there is a safety bulletin that's advised for the flat plate snap hooks. Summary of the investigation reads, to prevent the strength of safety harness tether becoming compromised in service due to lateral loading on the tether hook, the method used to anchor the end of the tether to the vessel should be arranged to ensure that the tether hook cannot become entangled with deck fittings or other equipment. You need to know that not all snap hooks are created equal, and you may choose to use a flat plate snap hook. But when you do, whether you use the flat plate or whether you use a side molded, 
You need to ensure that there's procedures in place for the proper use. You need to put policies together and you need to build team training together so that while you're on the water, when bad stuff happens, these are in the right place so the loads are aligned directly, no matter which one you use. And here's some more information to help you. The flat plate snap hook was designed 135 years ago. It's stamped out of stainless steel. The loads are designed to go in line and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to show that it's definitely going to be stronger pulling this way than loads coming laterally. Now looking at the molded sidewall you have on these snap hooks, you can see that it's definitely going to be much stronger. I also wanted to let you know that the ISO 12401 is also stamped on many of these and these are the codes that you're going to be looking for when it comes to having a certified or one that passes some international standard. Now I am not saying that one is better than the other because remember the side molded snap hook still failed under testing. As a matter of fact the standard that is used which is stamped right here the ISO 12401 does not do any testing for side loads whatsoever. They're only tested and manufactured for loads which are designed to be in line with the snap hook. So it doesn't make any difference. Any safety device that you hand, the skipper doesn't just hand you a safety device and say, go ahead and good luck. Every safety device, I don't care what it is, has to be trained. The awareness has to be made of the hazards. You don't just hook in and hook on and think everything's going to be good. There are particular methods, there's methodologies, and there's policies and procedures that need to be in place in every vessel. Understand and train your crew and train yourself the proper use of tethers. The tether is not designed to keep you dragging along the boat. The tether is designed to keep you on the deck of the boat. In this photo, you can see a reenactment on the very vessel of the person who self-recovered. He used both the shorty and the long. He was clipped in on both sides, thus the reason he was able to self-recover. He was able to do this because he controlled the risk. Not only one, he built in redundancy. He had both of those tied in. So whichever way he fell or if he slipped, it gave him a greater opportunity to self-recover or stay on the deck. Remember, Two sailors went overboard. Both were at the fore peak. Both were clipped in. Both experienced the same risk. But one was clipped in with redundancy. He had both tethers clipped in. He was able to self recover and the other one wasn't. When you double the controls, you minimize the risk. The Ministry of Sailing is made up of professional sailors, but every single one of us were also former military. And there's a military phrase which really applies to this. And it's two is one and one is none. And when you start to understand what that really means, it's a mantra you can really start to live by in high risk situations. Two is one and one is none means you build redundancy in not only your controls, you build in redundancy in your equipment and your procedures and everything else. So if one fails, you always have a backup. Thus the reason that we have double tethers. They're not intended necessarily to be used one at a time for reaching far or reaching short. Double tethers is doubling your control. They're intended to be both used simultaneously to keep sailors on the deck of the vessel. Make sure that your tethers can run all the way up and down the intended run without getting hindered by any structural devices on the vessel. It's going to be really important you never clip into lifelines and you never clip into stanchions and you never clip into shrouds. Clip them into hard points. One pro tip here, have a static tether always clipped onto the base of the mast so when somebody goes up there they can just grab that one and clip right in. Now despite the marine advisory in 2018, as you know it's pretty much gone unnoticed. But Australia has taken a much different approach. After the ninth Sydney Hobart race, the entire emergency response system of the government of Australia was revamped because it was severely stretched and they couldn't respond to all the emergencies which were happening simultaneously. Additionally, Australian sailing at the same time revamped a lot of their security procedures as well. Today, Australia is often first to make progressive safety decisions. They don't necessarily get driven by public opinion. They tend to err on the side of public safety. Down under, the offshore regulations no longer allow the flat plate snap hook 
to be used in offshore events. Special Regulation 5.02.1C for Categories 1, 2, and 3 and 4 races now states that safety lines shall have a snap hook at each end. All new safety lines shall use snap hooks that are metallic with cast, forged, or side molded supports. New safety lines shall not use stainless steel plate snap hooks. Keep this in mind. You know, problematic snap hooks have been serving sailors for decades without any reason of concern. Sometimes the circumstances, however, could lead to a failure. Now these circumstances may not occur on your boat, but the cost of changing out a weaker snap link for maybe a stronger one is gonna give you a lot more peace of mind, give your family peace of mind, give your crew a peace of mind. Remember, they might be subscribers too. Next week, we're gonna teach you how to panic early because the next life you save just might be your own. Thanks for watching, this is Schaefer, I'm out. Now it's time for the subscriber of the month. Malte Tyson, I think you're funny. Not only do I think you're funny, but a lot of Classic. others thought it was funny too. Cheap mountain equipment lasts a lifetime. That's right. When it comes to safety equipment, I always remember an Austrian mountain rescue guy once said, expensive mountaineering equipment lasts up to 10 years. Cheap mountain equipment lasts a lifetime. <laughs>